Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ on Pentecost Sunday. Amen. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will be not gratified the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. May God grant his blessings to the reading and understanding of his holy word. Amen. Let us bow our heads and let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you and give thanks for the day of Pentecost in our lives and in our church's life. Thank you that, in, that 2,000 years ago you have called the church into being. And thank you, Heavenly Father, that the first Hungarian Reformed Church here in Walton Hills is also created and called into being by your Holy Spirit. Thank you that you are giving us your leading power. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are our comforter. Thank you that you lead us into all truth by the Lord Jesus Christ. We praise you, Heavenly Father, for giving the spirit of truth, love, self-control into our lives and all the fruit that we have received from him. O oh Lord, please continue to bless us, blessing your Son, Jesus Christ, and help us, Lord, that our celebration may be fulfilled by the power of your Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Communion event. Uh, during Pentecost, on Pentecost Sunday. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that we may approach you by the, your Son, Jesus Christ, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Please, please lead us, guide us through him, so we may glorify your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I'm reading the Word of God from our scripture reading from the letter to the Galatians, chapter 5, verse 16. The Apostle Paul writes, Live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, dear friends, we all know and have seen Hollywood movies, action movies, and in those movies, usually there is a fight between good and evil. We are satisfied when the good wins at the end. The truth, however, is that it does not just happen in the movies, but in the real life as well. There is a warfare, a battle going on that we may all experience in our lives when the flesh is opposed to the Spirit. The Holy Spirit, however, wants to bridle the flesh in order to help us to live an obedient life uh, to God so we may walk on the way of the Lord Jesus Christ. Actually, the flesh is open to any sin. One of the greatest lies of uh, our own self is to believe that if we judged ourselves, we would not come under judgment. How true it is. Many times we don't judge ourselves, but rather we judge and blame others for our own mistakes and failures. By the way, if we get to that point to judge ourselves, then most of the time we try to find excuses to exempt ourselves from responsibility. However, if we want to live a life that glorifies God and pleases Him, 
then the Apostle Paul encourages us to live by the Spirit, to live by the leading power of the Spirit. To live by means to surrender ourselves wholly to the leading of the other person. Many people in this world are led by either uh, the flesh or the Holy Spirit. Which one wins depends on the one we yield to. Therefore, either the flesh or the Spirit wins. There is no middle road. However, the consequence is entirely uh, different based on the decision we make in this life. We may choose between what we allow in our lives and what not. We still have a say-so in what we allow. We have free will. God did not make us robots. Do you know uh, anyone or anything in your life that turns you away from Christ and leads you to the wrong pathway? If yes, then you need to make a serious decision to avoid those places, people, images, music, movies, tools, and anything that brings temptation and failure uh, to your life. Just think about it. If you mess around with it, you will give in to it. If you are in a tempting situation, then after a while you cannot resist it. It's very difficult, very hard to resist anything through and uh, from our human effort. Human will many times is not strong enough to resist evil. Therefore, we need the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God can lead us to and give us victory. In order to live a victorious life, the Lord gives us certain characteristics so we may walk and stay on the right way. The Apostle Paul lists nine fruit of the Spirit in the letter to the Galatians, as we heard in our scripture reading. Have you ever heard that the Holy Spirit produces fruit in your life? The fruit of the Spirit is to be present in the life of every believer, every Christian person who follows Jesus Christ and accepted Him as Savior and Lord. And it's without exception. Just like evil works to characterize the lives of the lost people, the fruit of the Spirit is proof of one's salvation that the person was redeemed from sin. So the Apostle Paul lists these characteristics, the fruit of the Spirit, and the first of the fruit of the Spirit is love, the second is joy, the third is peace, the fourth is patience, the fifth one is kindness, the sixth one is goodness, the seventh is faithfulness, gentleness, or in other Bible translation, meekness is the eighth fruit of the Spirit. And the last one, the ninth, ninth uh, fruit, is self-control. These nine characteristics are the fruit of the Spirit. I don't know if you noticed it or not, but the word fruit is in singular. In the letter to the Galatians, we find that they, they are not fruits in plural, but they are fruit, fruit of the Spirit in singular. It points us to uh, the fact that we don't get one and then another and then the third one and then the fourth one and so on and so forth, but all nine characteristics are present in the life of each believer. According to the work of the Holy Spirit in you, all nine must be there in your life. The Holy Spirit produces the fruit in us to live a fruitful life. That sounds obvious, but that's not natural. It means to live and act to the glory of God, to overcome our old self, to resist temptation, and to enrich the life of others, and live for the life of being a blessing. However, you can only produce fruit if you are in Christ and yield your life uh, to the leading of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord Jesus help you that you may walk by the power of the Holy Spirit and you may yield your life to Him so the fruit of the Spirit be present and displayed in your life by the work of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us bow our heads and pray. Holy and eternal God, dear Heavenly Father, 
We praise your name that you give us your love, grace, strength, and commitment to fulfill your mighty will. However, we need your help, O Lord. We need your guidance by the leading power of the Holy Spirit. We need your Spirit's strength to obey and do your will, and through this we glorify you, Heavenly Father. Fill us with your Holy Spirit so we become your followers by loving you with all our hearts and with all our souls and with all our minds, and love our neighbor as ourselves. By this we glorify you in our lives and in the Church which was called into being by your Holy Spirit, and in this world where you have sent us to serve you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please help us, bless us, to walk in your Spirit, Heavenly Father, in Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now, dear and beloved, dear brothers and sisters, I would like to invite you to please be partakers of the Holy Communion by me leading you and uh, at your home as you have prepared the bread and the wine. Please partake it when you will hear the calling word. Let us now hear the order of the Holy Communion. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, hear how our Lord Jesus instituted the Last Supper. This is presented to us by the Apostle Paul in his first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 11, beginning at the 23rd verse. For I received from the Lord that which I also gave to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night in which he was betrayed took bread, and after giving thanks he broke it and said, Take ye, this is my body, which is being broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also, he took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. And now, in response to the bidding of our Lord, let us proclaim and keep His memory by humbling ourselves before our Heavenly Father, acknowledging and confessing our sins and our unworthiness. Let us bow our heads and let us pray and confess our sins. Almighty and eternal God, in Jesus Christ, our Heavenly Father, we come before you as poor sinners, acknowledging and confessing that we are born in sin, prone to all evil and unapt to any good, who day by day in manifold ways transgress your holy commandments, so that according to your righteous judgment we deserve eternal death and damnation. But now, Lord, we humble ourselves before you and we cry out unto you, Help us, Heavenly Father, have mercy upon us, and for the love of your Holy Son, forgive us our sins. Grant unto us and nurture within us the gifts of your Holy Spirit, so that by their light we might recognize all the more our sins, and by their power renounce and free ourselves of all sin, and thus to bring forth the good fruits as justification and sanctification, as a sacrifice pleasing unto you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Having confessed our sin, let us now profess our faith, repeating together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, one holy universal Christian Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Dearly beloved in conformity, let me now address several questions to you, asking that each of you please reply according to your faith and conviction uh, with uh, uh, your faith and in the, uh, your conviction in the Lord Jesus Christ. My first question is this. Do you believe that by the fall of the first man, whom God created in true righteousness, holiness, and innocence, each of you also are totally fallible and sinful, unable of your own strength to stand before the judgment seat of God, deserving instead condemnation, punishment, and death? Please answer this I believe and profess. Secondly, do you believe that God, having compassion on sinful men, sent forth in the flesh for your sake his Holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, by whose once for all perfect blood sacrifice he took away the power of sin and condemnation and justifies you freely by his grace through your faith in Jesus Christ? Answer this I believe and profess. Thirdly, do you believe that God, who raised our Lord Jesus Christ, will by him raise us also from the dead, and clothing our mortal bodies with immortality, and will translate us into his eternal glory? Answer, this I believe and profess. Surely, having believed all this, do you promise and resolve uh, that in gratitude for this grace, you will dedicate your entire life to the Lord, and even now in this present world, live as his redeemed to the glory of God. Answer, this I promise and resolve. All this together with you, I do believe and profess and promise and resolve. Now therefore I proclaim to you the forgiveness of your sins and the life everlasting which our Lord God give to all who truly believe in his Son Jesus Christ in freeness of grace and for the sake of his Holy Son. Amen. In the same manner, dearly beloved, in which Jesus Christ gave thanks and broke and gave bread to his disciples, let us also, before partaking of this bread and wine, give thanks to the Lord for his goodness. Let us pray. Almighty God, since nothing can be sacred or, being, or blessed without being consecrated or blessed by you, we most humbly ask you to sanctify and bless these elements of bread and wine, these signs and tokens of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. As we bodily partake of them, may we receive by faith Christ crucified, and so feed upon him, that he may be one with us and we with him, that he may live in us and be in him both now and evermore. Amen. And now, dearly beloved, those of you who prepared a Holy Communion, the Lord's Supper at your home, the piece of bread and the sip of wine, let us now partake in the Holy Communion as I am partaking with uh, my dear family members. I would like to ask them, please come up to the Lord's table. This is the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, which was broken for us. These do in remembrance of him. This is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for us for the remission of our sins. Do this in remembrance of him. Dearly beloved, it was essentially in this manner that the Lord Jesus Christ instituted the Last Supper 
So did the apostles, the reformers, our forefathers partake of it, and so did we partake of it also by the grace of God. Before we would finish this Holy Communion, Pentecost Sunday event and service, we beg and admonish you that you receive not the grace of God in vain. Let not sin rule over you, but rather in your conduct be worthy of your Christian calling, so that nothing might take from you the love of God which he manifested and confirmed in his Son Jesus Christ. As his saints and loved ones, be compassionate. Put on goodness, humility, meekness, and long-suffering. Bear with one another. And if you have a complaint against one another, forgive each other even as Jesus forgave you. May the peace of God rule in your hearts, so that which you were called in the one body. And now before we close our service, Pentecost Sunday service, let us raise our hearts to God and thank Him for all His goodness, love, and mercies. Let us bow our heads and pray. In the same sacrament of the Holy Supper, you have given to us a token of your reconciling love in your Son, Jesus Christ, O Heavenly Father. All the days of our life will be proclaimed to the richness of your mercy by which you have adopted us as your children and have chosen us for your inheritance. O God, you have redeemed us at a great price, and for this the joy of our life will be to praise and dedicate our body, soul, and spirit to you. Accept, O Lord, our grateful thanks, and help us by your grace to keep the vows made unto you on this holy occasion. Let us be faithful unto you till death. Teach us to do your will. Let us be born again by your Holy Spirit, so that from this day forward we may live by faith in Jesus Christ, who loved us and gave himself for us. O God of peace, bless us in all perfection. Keep our bodies, souls, and spirits blameless and holy until the day in which Jesus our Savior will come, to whom with you our Father and with the Holy Spirit our Comforter be eternal praise and glory. Amen. Please receive the benediction. People of God, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Dearly beloved, dear brothers and sisters, I wish you a blessed Pentecost celebration. May God bless you and may we have this hope and faith that one day we will gather together in this sanctuary again to praise God and glorify his name. May God bless you until then.